Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be taking this cabinet or bookshelf, if you will, and giving it a farmhouse facelift. So I've had this bookshelf since I moved out in my early 20s and it's just time that it got a facelift. I'm tired of the dark wood or the dark finish on it and I really wanted to turn it into like a farmhouse with a uh, barn door style, gate, iron, all of that. You'll see in the end what the vision is. But I had Lila here, this is Mother's Day weekend that we were working on this and we were gonna do it together but she couldn't push the nozzle down, bless her heart. <laughs> So we were working on this one together and she just kind of was my camera girl for the rest of the day. So I'm using this Rust-Oleum spray paint and I'm just going to go ahead and put a couple of coats on every single surface in this bookshelf. I do highly recommend sanding a smooth surface before you spray paint it. Um, I didn't do that, but I wasn't expecting the inside to, you know, be really seen. So I really didn't care. It was the outsides that I actually cared about. So. Highly recommend sanding your smooth surfaces before you spray paint. The next part of this is going to be staining the butcher block top that I am going to be putting on this furniture piece. I actually took a step, like when you refinish stairs and you've got like the foot part of the step. I took one of those from Lowe's instead of like buying a butcher block piece. And let me tell you, it was really affordable. I think this piece here was like eight bucks and it looks just like butcher block after it's stained. Let me tell you, do things on a budget and you'll be able to use things for many more purposes than what they were intended for. This turned out absolutely fantastic and it was the perfect size. So here I'm letting Lila help me use the stain. It wasn't something that she was really used to ever. <laughs> and she was not as coordinated with it. But what I'm using is just a old rag and I'm going to soak the stain on for uh, two to three coats, depending on how deep you want your stain to be. Um, I think this is coal called New American, Old American. I'll put it on the screen. <laughs> But I really like this stain finish and I think with all of my projects, this is the stain that I'm going to be using. Not to mention I have an entire little jar of it. So we got a lot to use up. Oh yeah, and I am leaving the end unfinished just because I know I'm going to need to be chopping off like, I don't know, six inches at the end. So I didn't even stain the whole thing. 
Moving on to the doors, I really wanted to keep this project super budget friendly. So we actually just found some free pallet board around our area and you can definitely find free pallet board by going to local businesses, finding out if they actually want to give you their pallets or just looking on Facebook marketplace. We actually have a store around here that gives pallets away for free whenever they don't need them. So you can definitely find cheap lumber in a pallet board, but Josh pulled these planks off for me and I did arrange them in a way that would require minimal cutting we just kind of had to cut the pieces at the top and angle the pieces in the center and I whitewashed these with diluted paint half white paint half water So I wasn't really sure how the pallet board was going to perform. I did go ahead and put two coats on this and then I let it dry and acclimate in the area where the boards were going to be living basically on the cabinet. So they would get used to the, I guess the atmosphere or the temperature just in case they warped. So Josh is actually taking the time and getting all of these cut and angled in the right place and I am a chicken so that's why he is the one making all of the cuts because I will for sure chop off a finger or something so I'm going to go ahead and label the bottom of all of these so that once he starts cutting these longer pieces if they get out of order then we know where they're going to be So when attaching all of the pieces together, we used a brad nailer, but feel free to use a hammer and some good old finishing nails because they will work just fine.
All right, it's time for confessions. I measured the boards wrong. <laughs> I measured the height of the whole cabinet and did not account for the gap at the bottom. So we did end up cutting off a inch and a half on both ends to be able to allow for the gate to be able to swing freely without hitting the top or the bottom piece. So this is a really flattering angle. So I've gone up to Lowe's twice, gone to Ace Hardware, and now I'm on my way to Hobby Lobby, and if I can't find what I need there, my last hope is Home Depot. I am looking for gate hardware for this project that I'm working on, and I can't find what I need anywhere because it needs to attach to the gate on the front side because it's gonna be like a decorative piece, and it needs to attach to the side of the cabinet. But the wood that it's attaching to is like an inch thick. So it needs to be like a triangular piece and a triangular piece. You know what I mean? Okay, now we're at a red light. So I need a triangular piece on the front and a triangular piece on the side to kind of hold the door on. Do Why is this that difficult? I know they make them, I've seen them, but where? To answer my own question, Ace. Ace Hardware is where I found these brackets and it just turned out perfectly. This is everything that I wanted this to be.